A key geometric property of the target area that we're imaging with radar is surface roughness. The roughness of the target has a big impact on how much energy is scattered back to the radar sensor and therefore it has a big impact on how bright an area in the image will look. A very smooth surface like an airport runway or a flat water body is actually very good at scattering the energy but it scatters the energy in the opposite direction to the sensor. That's because it's flat and relatively smooth compared to the size of the wavelength. It's a key thing to remember that roughness is always dependent on the size of the wavelength that you're using. It's a relative measure. The roughness is only relative to the size of the wavelength. At longer wavelengths, an object may look relatively smooth, which at shorter wavelengths actually looks quite rough. A smooth surface will act like a specular reflector and it will scatter the energy directly in the opposite direction just from Snell's law. So the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection. Because you're looking obliquely with an imaging radar system, a smooth surface will therefore scatter all the energy away from the sensor and it will look dark. And this is the reason that water bodies and things like runways and roads will look dark in a radar image because the surface is very smooth. As the surface gets rougher, more energy is scattered into different directions. And so as the surface gets proportionally rougher, more energy is scattered back towards the sensor. So the backscatter increases and the brightness of the pixel increases. When you get to really rough surfaces, then in fact the energy is scattered equally in all directions and that's where the signal to the radar looks brightest. The best example of this on natural surfaces is when you get vegetation. So the volume scattering effect of vegetation essentially acts like a really rough surface and gives you a very bright response. When you look across an image of open water, and particularly across the oceans. The variations in the backscatter in this image is actually affected only by the surface roughness. The dielectric constant is the same for the water over the entire image. And the variations that you see are driven by surface roughness effects. The roughness effects over the ocean can be in multiple scales. So you have very large gravity waves, but you also have small capillary waves driven by the wind blowing across the water surface. And both these roughness effects will impact on the signal that you see. So what you're seeing in a radar image is a combination of both the larger waves but also the small waves driven by the wind blowing across the surface. In terms of characterizing roughness, we have to think about, well, how do you quantify that? Typically, one way to think about calculating the roughness of a surface is that you look at the mean height of the surface and then you look at the root mean square height variation across that surface that gives you some kind of indication of how rough the surface is. It indicates the variability of the heights across the surface. Some ways of looking at surface roughness also includes the correlation length. So that's trying to characterize the horizontal variation in the roughness also. The root mean square height variation and the correlation length can both be used to drive physical models to better understand how the radar backscatter is influenced by changes in the surface roughness.